Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's Josh here from Keep It Techie, where I help you level up your tech skills and take control of your digital life one project at a time. And now that tax season just wrapped up, I figured it's the perfect time to talk about something most of us need, but never get around to setting up. And that's organizing our documents the smart way. And so today I'm showing you guys how to install Paperless NGX. And it's a super sleek open source document management system that turns your scanned documents into a fully searchable online archive. And we're going to do this using Docker. And to make things smoother, I'll be using my custom script that installs both Docker and Docker Compose for you. And so more on that in a second, but let's get to it. All right, before we jump into the terminal, let's break down what Paperless NGX actually does. Now, Paperless is a community supported document management system designed to help you go paperless by scanning your physical documents, automatically reading and indexing them using OCR, letting you search and categorize them via a clean web interface. And so think of it like having your own personal Google Drive, but it's open source. That means it's private and fully self hosted. So you control your data and it works great on everything from a home lab server to a Raspberry Pi. And look, tax season just ended. You probably got receipts, W-2s, 1099s, medical records, insurance documents, all floating around in envelopes or stuffed in drawers. So why not get ahead of the game for next year and set up a real digital filing cabinet? Plus, if you're trying to declutter, go minimal or just build better digital habits, this is a perfect project. Now, before we get to my virtual machine, I also wanted to show you guys where to get my script from. You can get it off of my wiki. I'll have the link down in the description of the video, but this will allow you to quickly install Docker Compose on Ubuntu 24.04. This wiki breaks down the full script, like what it actually does, how it adds GPG key, and as well as add the repository and install Docker. It also adds the current user that runs the script to the Docker group. So. Once you finish, all you have to do is log out and log back in and you're done and you have Docker Compose and all that stuff installed. This is essentially how you run it. And then you can also get that script or find the script over here on my GitHub. I also had a link down in the description of the video as well. But all you have to do is right click right here, copy link, and I'll show you guys what to do from there. Let's go down and switch over to my terminal. What's up, y'all? If you've been watching my channel for a minute, you already know I stay talking about Linux. And if you're looking for a solid, reliable enterprise Linux distro, let me put you on to Rocky Linux. This is the go-to replacement for CentOS, and it's built for the community by the community. It's got everything you need for a stable and secure Linux experience, whether you're running servers, home labs, or enterprise workloads. And the best part is backed by CIQ, making sure it stays rock solid for the long haul. So if you're tired of these companies pulling a plug on your favorite distros, Rocky Linux is where you need to be. And I've covered Rocky Linux before, and trust me, it's worth checking out. So head over to rockylinux.org to learn more and get started. All right, and so I'm logged into my virtual machine. This is Ubuntu 24.04, and let's go down and download our script right fast. All we have to do is type wget, and then we can paste that link in there and this will download that script for us. And if we LS our local or our directory, whatever three you're in, you'll see it right there. And all you have to do is chmod to make it executable and then just specify that script, boom. And then we can go down and run it. So we could just run sudo four slash period four slash and then install docker dot shaw. Press enter, go down and go through you just let it work its magic. It'll go through. It'll update the system if it needs any updates and then it'll install Docker for us. And I'll actually be back when this finishes. And then I'll show you guys how to set up our Docker Compose file for Paperless. All right, so Docker and Docker Compose is installed. All we have to do is exit out and then log back into our server. And we are a part of the Docker group now. So we can run all our Docker commands without having to type sudo. Now, let me go back to the website right fast because I want to show you guys how to set up paperless. And what you want to do, just click get started. This will take you to the documentation page. And if you click right here under use Docker Compose, that's what I'm going to do. I'll show you guys how to get examples of the Docker Compose file. And this is what I use to build out my own Compose. 
So click there and then right here, it tells you what to do. Make sure that Docker and Docker Compose are installed, which we did with our script. Now it says go to our Docker Compose directory on the project page. So all you have to do is click there and this will open up the GitHub page with all their Docker Compose files. And it all depends on how you want it set up. You can set it up using MarionDB, Portainer, Postgres, SQLite if you want to. And I'm not sure what's in this one right here. It just says Docker Compose right there. But you can pull these up. Let's say you want to use BB or MariaD. You can go up in here and this gives you a full example of how to set up your Docker Compose file. So that's 100% good to see. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to worry about that which is the, normally the hardest part for a lot of people. And so now that I showed you that, let me go down and hop back over and we can go down and create our directory and I'll show you guys how to set up our Docker container like that. All right, so I like to organize every container that I create. So especially when I'm using compose files. So the first thing I do is always create a directory for whatever the application that I'm using. This is paperless. So I'll just create a folder called paperless and so make dir and so let's cd into that directory and what we need to do is make a yaml file for it our compose file now always just follow the instructions like i've always done since i learned docker is or docker compose just create a docker dash compose dot yaml file go on create that first and actually we could just go right into nano right fast and press enter it'll go down and create that file for us and like i said i already have a demo compose file for you guys and i'll just give you guys this if you want it i'll put it i guess i'll create an article as well or create a wiki with this example in there it's just something i put together real quick to demo the application and i also i'm a fan of marion db i used to like my sequel of course marion db is kind of like its replacement that's still open source but i like marion db so i always use that but you can of course modify it to use whatever database that you want to use all we gotta do is save this right fast so i did Control s and then Control x that will save the file for us and now we are ready to start up our docker compose file and all you have to do is type docker compose and then up dash d and press enter i know what the issue is when i was testing this out i had an environment file that i wanted to use which i decided not to use during the demonstration which it should be down here at the bottom environment file yeah i could just delete that out and i can actually delete that whole thing out yeah and so let's go down and save and i'll make sure i put the right one out now that i know that i left that in there now hold on one second it looks like it didn't accept my group let me check my group permissions okay so it didn't add me to the docker group which is weird so let's just go on and do that right fast so i might have to troubleshoot my script it was working when i put it out there though that's weird let's check it again and i know i logged out and logged back in hold on so let's exit and then let's get back in there right fast yeah there we go so i'm in the docker group sorry about that guys all right so let's cd back into our paperless directory and then run the docker command again i'll just up arrow just to find it and let's go on and try to run it here we go all right so we got it running got it up and running so basically what it's gonna do is download everything for us it's gonna download the web server the database all that stuff and then get it all set up for us and running and so we'll wait for this to finish and then i'll show you guys paperless oh i know what i did wrong let me show you guys the website right fast so why it's still installing if you go back over here i was supposed to run my script without running sudo otherwise it's gonna give the root account docker permissions so i was supposed to run it without running sudo and then the commands will run as sudo in the inside of it and then once it gets to that step it'll add the current user of josh that's running the script to that group i think that's the way i wrote it so yeah anyway let's get back over here and wait for this thing to finish all right so our docker container is running and so you could just run docker ps and this will list out the container so we got paperless right there our marion db and redis running our web server all that stuff is running and then all you have to do is find out what your ip address is and paperless runs on port 8000 and you can tell by right here see 8000 supporting at 8000 and it's pointing to 8000 and all we have to do is find out and of course it sets up its own networks and all that stuff but just find out what the outside ip address is for this server not any of these internal docker ip addresses but the actual physical box server ip address 
and then we're just gonna copy that and then let's switch back over to our web browser i open up a new tab and then we're gonna paste that in and then put port 8000 at the end of it and press enter all right so we are up and first thing you need to do is go on and create you a account and as you can see right there on the front page it says this is the first user account for this installation and will be granted super user privileges so if you're doing this on a cloud server or something like that which i don't recommend you do that i would prefer you set this up in your home lab especially if you're gonna put some personal documents on there like tax information which is social security number you want to keep this on your local network and probably not connected to the internet wherever you have it just don't have it connected to the internet have it on your local network and only accessible from other systems on your network or a specific system from your network or something like that so you can access the information like on a raspberry pi or something like that it's running on there and it's only accessible by one ip or something to that effect but anyway just create your user account. So I'm gonna just put admin just to make it simple. And then it says email is optional, but we're going to create a super strong password, which really doesn't matter. I'm gonna delete this server after this, but then we're going to sign up and don't be worried guys. When this thing first comes up, it does take a little time to build everything out for you. You know what I'm saying? It has to build all the tables in the database. So you can check the logs and see where it is by running the Docker log command. That'll pull up all the logs for those containers and you can check it out and see what's going on. But I recommend you go through the tour. You can check it out. It'll break everything down for you and show you where everything is. You can drag and drop documents. It'll show you all your documents here, filters. You could do different views, your tags, mail, manage email accounts, workflows, it's so many options in this thing, man. Like I have a production one set up in my environment. I've been playing around with it for a while now, uh, just to see what all you can do with it. So I could be a little bit prepared for doing this video, but yeah, it has a lot of options in here to handle all your documents. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely recommend you use it. Now, let me show you guys something I thought that was super interesting. So let's say you have a shared drive somewhere on your network and you want to add certain things to your paper list by just dropping those documents there. You can just drop them in a shared document and you can have this server connected to that share and you can set up a workflow. That's what these workflows are for. You can create a workflow and you can create triggers and it's super dope. Like I set up one just playing around with it when I was trying to learn it. You can set up the sources, the paths, the rules, all that stuff. And then you can go through the action, what you want it to do. As far as adding an assignment, you can assign a storage path, custom fields, assign titles, tags, all that. Once you get this thing fully set up, that's one of the things I really enjoyed about learning within Paperless. And another thing I wanted to show you guys, just dig into these settings, man. You make a lot of cool changes in here to make it your own. Now, real quick, here are some few tips to take your setup to the next level. I recommend you add a reverse proxy like Nginx or HTTPS. Use your local CA that we talked about in the last video. Also set up backups for your data and media folders. Also, you can integrate with a network scanner or a phone app to push documents automatically. And if you're running this on a home server, don't forget to limit external access. Like I stated a little bit earlier, this doesn't need to be open to the world at all, especially if you're going to have sensitive information on it. And I've been running paperless NGX in my home lab for a little while. And honestly, it's one of those underrated tools that just works. It's not flashy, but once you have it going, you'll wonder how you ever lived without it. No more digging through file cabinets or losing stuff in your downloads folder is really a game changer. And so that's pretty much all I got for you guys today. That is the full install of Paperless NGX using Docker on Linux. You could grab my Docker install script from the Keep It Take it GitHub or my wiki link, which will both be down in the description. If this helps you out, Give the video a thumbs up. Go down and subscribe for more Linux and home lab tutorials. And drop a comment down below if you got any suggestions. And remember, organizing your digital life is one of the best ways to stay productive and protect your data. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from. 
whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle, there's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech.